Well, in this video, what I want to talk about is why I practice Theravada Buddhism. So, first of all, a little bit over 10 years ago, one of my good friends invited me to a monastery to practice meditation. And after going to different monasteries or practicing different forms of meditation, I was pretty excited about going to this monastery because I knew it was full of monks that were monastics and practicing daily. And I wanted to see what that was going to be like and experience that. And right away, I actually hated it because it was like a, a Buddhist boot camp. I um, had to, of course, sit in a meditation posture for an hour when I first went there and that was excruciatingly painful because I had never sat for an hour before in my whole life. So all I wanted to do was get up and move. And so it was hard to find a position that felt comfortable for me during that first hour of meditation. I remember going through that in like a 6 a.m. meditation that was a complete hour long and it was guided by a, a Dhamma talk by a, a Buddhist monk named Ajahn Jeffrey, who was the abbot at that monastery I went to. And boy, was I blown away by the weekend, because after that we practiced um, five precepts, and then when we were staying at that monastery, we practiced eight precepts. And um, the five precepts that I was practicing was not to kill anything, no being at all well at the monastery and then also practicing um, no lying as well and then also practicing um, no stealing and being at the monastery those two to me were very easy to practice not a problem with those however uh, not killing anything could be kind of a problem if you had to fight off maybe some ants like in your tent or like a mosquito or something you have to figure out a way to avoid killing um, some type of being as such during that time spending there at the monastery and two other precepts that I had to follow as well was not indulging in intoxicants that was really easy because I didn't have any intoxicants there I don't smoke or drink or do any types of drugs so that was pretty easy for me and then uh, the fifth one was not indulging in um, not in, indulging in any sexual activity while I'm at the monastery as well so those are the five precepts that I chose to follow and there's three others that I'll mention in a later video but those are the five basic ones that I wanted to mention that I continue to practice even now um, being a lay person like I am so to go back to that weekend it was like a Buddhist boot camp and not just the meditation aspect but also having to follow the precepts and also eating one time a day because the monks in this particular monastic order uh, Theravada Buddhism this Thai forest tradition that I had uh, spent time at Basically, they eat one time per day. Um, there's a few other, few things that they can eat later in the day, which I'll discuss in a later video, but right now I'm just gonna continue with um, how my experience there. And eating one time a day, that was pretty difficult as well. I had maybe done it before by accident in the past, before that date, but not something that I was accustomed to doing each day. So that was pretty difficult as well, because at a certain point you kind of just start thinking nothing but food. So that's where the meditation practice could really come into play and come into handy because if you really have a good command over your meditation practice, you probably won't be dwelling or so having so much mindset or almost so many thoughts about food and be so um, attached to that idea of eating it in your next meal. Um, and then later that same first day, I got to uh, go to a question and answers um, session with the uh, abbot of the monastery and that was very informative as well because I had some other 
um, lay people that were asking some questions and some of those questions that I might have probably wanted to ask at the time, but I was probably a little bit too self-conscious to ask any questions at that particular time. Uh, except for one, I, there was a question I do remember asking, can you meditate while running? Because I was a big avid runner at that time and wanted to see if I can kill two birds with one stone by getting my exercise in and meditating at the same time. And the avid told me that is possible that I could actually run and meditate at the same time. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then um, the next day it was the same thing. Uh, we went through more meditation, but before that next day came about, we went through another hour of meditation before we went to bed. And once again, that was very difficult for me. So that's how the two and a half to three days went when I went to that Buddhist monastery. So I really didn't feel very comfortable with the whole process once I was there and, and experiencing it for myself. It wasn't until after that weekend I realized um, it almost like planted a seed in me um, that I felt there, I did get some good results from it. I actually did feel somewhat calmer and less anxious, less anxious, I should say. I noticed before that time, I would always feel like, oh, I had to go, 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 always be in a rush to do things. And then after that weekend, I felt a little bit more relieved in realizing that coming to like a self-realization that I don't need to be in a hurry to do everything. I could be just here in the now and not rush into the next thing I have to do or always feel like I have to have something in mind to do next. So that's how I knew it was helpful. And that's how I, and that's the reason why I kept the practice going and also returned to that monastery several times to practice meditation. And then afterwards, even going to some other monasteries as well to continue the practice. So the reason, reason why I continue to practice that type of Buddhism because it resonated with me so much, the uh, aspect of the virtuous aspect of the uh, Buddhist practice. Because I felt like there had to be some type of component in that particular regard to make you feel human, and make you feel normal. And I feel like that was the way to do so having those kind of boundaries from yourself, not really to restrict you, but to almost like give you a sense of freedom because you can really work on your inner well-being once you had a good foundation of precepts or some level of goodness that you would practice in order to feel good within yourself. So that's the reason why I practice that form of Buddhism because I feel like it's a, a really powerful practice because of the uh, virtuous component that's within it.